Welcome back everyone to my Let's Play of Dragon Warrior 4 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Last episode, we uh, did some exploring uh, back in Hayville and um, Keylon Castle. We fought a whole bunch of monsters and uh, basically got some experience uh, to prepare us for the trip to the uh, these mines right here. So, not, too much, not a lot of treasure in here, but there is a lot of uh, tough enemies. So, we're going to find a very interesting weapon here uh, as well. Uh, the Nara can use. It is weaker than uh, the Morning Star, but uh, it has a bunch of unique effects. It's kind of like almost like a chance spell. Um, it's the Silver Tarot cards, and uh, I'll be showing because this uh, dungeon is very very short. Uh, after I finish this dungeon, I will be showing off uh, the various uh, effects of the Silver Tarot cards. So you have a. Uh, New enemy here, the uh, the Rogue Whispers. A lot of times they start the battle confused, so that's uh, pretty nice. So yeah, it says right there they're flustered, so they ain't gonna attack you uh, when they're flustered. So that's one good uh, unique thing about uh, these enemies here. So one of the few enemies that aren't going to be uh, much of a problem uh, in this uh, in this dungeon. Like I said, it's short, but the enemies are pretty, pretty tough. So... Yeah, they said that the, when the gas started coming in the mines, uh, the, the uh, enemies started appearing, so... Like the vamp dog here, uh, they can put your characters to sleep. So, uh, yeah, there's quite a few enemies that have some status effects here or cast spells. So, we can also run through the Mad Clowns we saw in the last episode. Uh, they cast Fireball, they only cast it once and then they run out of MP. But we can run into groups of two of them, so getting hit with two Fireballs, uh, that could be close to, you know, 20 damage on uh, every character. So, which is almost half of our uh, uh, Maro's hit points. So there's no need to investigate that corpse, I just like to talk with everything, because, you know, obsessive compulsive. Here's the last major treasure chest in the area. And we get the silver tarot cards. Like I said, Mara can equip them and uh, use them to attack, but they have a weaker attack power than the Morning Star. But if you weren't able to afford the Morning Star, uh, then, you know, there's a slight substitute until you get the Morning Star. Like I said, I'll be using them mainly for their uh, effects in battle. There are uh, nine effects, uh, three of them are bad. Uh, the other three are uh, positive. So you have a pretty good chance, like I said, of getting something good. But, you know, it's even the, uh, whatchamacallit, the six positives, you know, some are better than others. So, so you got the bio plant over there, like most of the other uh, carnivorous plants like that. Uh, we ran it in, in chapter two. Uh, they can hit pretty, pretty hard. So going to see some good use out of the uh, Maris Bang spell there, because it hits everybody. Uh, these Scarcore Roosters, uh, they hit really hard, and they're quite agile, so they can tend to uh, avoid your attacks. So yeah, they're taking or, uh, Orin down there pretty, uh, pretty uh, much. So once uh, once uh, we're just down to one group, uh, the Scarcores are all in uh, one group, so we can just switch to Fireball. Casts a little less uh, MP to cast than Bang. That's because it only targets a group, but we only have one group of enemies, we can uh, just save some of that MP. I do have that magic potion that I can use, but like I said, you might not have that, because uh, like I said, it was a random drop when I was leveling up, uh, so I will not use it. Keep ourselves healed up here. As you can see, we're going through quite a bit of, uh, of uh, healing. So these monsters, they hit tough. Luckily though, uh, we don't. We can cast the outside spell once we get the gunpowder, the special item, which is the last treasure chest we're get. And see the baby salamans, they uh, can spit a fireball out. And because that's a skill, not a magic, uh, not magic, but a skill, uh, it doesn't cost MP. So yeah, some enemies have, uh, like, basically it's a breath attack. That doesn't cost them MP, so we're not gonna get lucky like with those mad clowns where they're gonna run out of MP and we don't have to worry about it. Those things can spit fireballs every single round if they want to. 
Let me finish him off. Uh, now he's going through a lot of our MP. We just want to make sure that we save uh, at least 8 MP so that uh, Mara can cast outside. So if the battles gets a little bit tougher, I might want to start running away. Many of my buddies died, cough, cough. But like I said, this is a short dungeon. We only have just a little bit further to go. Basically, all you have to worry about is the first and uh, second level, because the third level, we don't have to worry about monsters. It's just and it's a one-room area. It's just uh, one, uh, one little room with uh, the gunpowder right there and a few miners. Make sure that I have uh, enough room for the gunpowder, so I'm gonna have to check out an antidote herb. I got them a long time ago because um, the uh, enemies in the uh, cave west of Keys can poison you, but of course, when I buy the antidote herbs, I never get poisoned. But when I was doing like a practice run, uh, I got poisoned, so I was like, well, better be safe and uh, get some antidote herbs. So, so we got that uh, gunpowder, but that guy said, hey, it's wet and probably ain't gonna do much except for uh, cast, uh, you know, make a loud sound. But that's all I really want the gunpowder for, to make a loud sound to scare the council. So I'm just trying to fight uh, one more enemy in here. There's a metal scorpion we can uh, run into later though in the game. Uh, but I just hope, I was hoping maybe I can farm it here. But uh, didn't have any luck so uh, run out of MP there. So like I said, I want to have at least 8 MP to cast outside, which I did. Uh, I was like, no more staying around, so. So we're just gonna heal ourselves up here. We're gonna make a save at the um, church up here uh, because uh, we have some negative. There can be some negative effects when we draw the tarot cards. There are nine possibilities. Uh, four of them are bad, uh, but one of the bad ones basically isn't gonna happen until you basically uh, suffer all the other bad uh, ones. So uh, that one you'll rarely see. Uh, but yeah, we have uh, five good effects, four bad effects. We're gonna show them off all here. Just gonna wander around here, get into some battles here. So this way, if uh, we get some bad effects and it wipes out our party, uh, we're not suffering too bad of a, of a loss. So, see, all you have to do is you select the silver tower cards in uh, from the item menu there, and it'll say that now it draws the silver tower cards, and you basically. Uh, See what happens. So that's the first one was a good one. It's the star card. That doubles the amount of experience in gold that we'll get after this battle. So that's really good if you like find a whole bunch of like metal slimes or something. Metal battles. Another good card to get is the sun card that we got there. It restores all our characters to their full hit points. So nice getting that double experience there. Of course these enemies are weak, so we're not getting a lot of experience, but okay. Now, we're gonna draw, unfortunately, a bad card here, so, uh, cast the, pull out the silver tower cards here. Now, this, uh, one is gonna be the perfection card. Uh, you have a very rare chance of drawing it on your first turn, so I got really unlucky there, it's like a 1% chance. The longer you, uh, use the cards, though, uh, the more, like, it, the chance of you drawing that card will increase, uh, in the same battle. So, that's one of the reasons why I want to make that save, because Perfection casts Defeat on the entire party, and we got lucky there, it only uh, hurt Nara. So, no more drawn cards uh, in this battle. But, this is why we, you know, we're fooling around with these silver cards right outside uh, the town here, so we can go back in and revive Nara after this battle. And this is a good place to do fights too, because uh, all the most of the area around there is high encounter rate. You know, hills, forests, high encounter rate. So it won't take long for us to you know get into a bunch of encounters to try all these different uh, effects out. So I just uh, when I revived now there, I reorganized uh, her inventory. Uh, so the silver cards there are basically at the front, so they'll be easy to draw. And this is another bad one, the tower card. It casts zap on your entire party. And the zap, the damage the zap does is based on Mara's level. So the higher she is, the higher level she is, the higher her stats are, her, her, her wisdom that affects her damage uh, with spells, uh, the more damage it's going to do to you. But 
you can still put cut out on it, so not as bad as the perfection college cast isn't defeat, but still another card that you don't really want to draw. But like I said, you don't have any choice of you know what cards you draw. So here's another good card that we got, the card of strength. Uh, what that does is it casts by kill, which doubles the attack power of uh, one of your characters. It only affects one of your characters though, uh, so and it's random which one it picks. So you hope it doesn't you know, affect somebody like Mara, who only has that poison needle. It's only going to do two damage there. Like you know, hit someone like Orin, does a lot of damage. And Mara in another level he gets that magic on uh, magic number thirteen. Like I said, most characters tend to be level 13 when we uh, finish these uh, these individual chapters. So yeah, we're pretty much right at the end of this chapter. So all we gotta do is set up that gunpowder and, uh, like I said, uh, scare the council to go to the king's chamber. Once we do that, we'll be uh, ready to, you know, go on to chapter 5. My Sherry here. Let's pull what we got. The card of justice. What justice card does is it casts the expel uh, spell on all enemies. Expel basically defeats the enemies, but any enemy that's defeated by the expel, basically like summons a wind that blows them away, uh, you won't get any experience or gold from that. So it's not. It's good if you're like trying to get away from something uh, real quick, uh, but it's not good for like like leveling. So. More mad clowns casting their fireballs, but this could be a bad battle to like draw the tower card with. We got the card of the moon, which casts around on all the enemies. So another beneficial card. Guess it's okay here now, because now they're only gonna be able to attack with uh, regular attacks if they use their fireball attacks. But we're taking quite a beating here, so uh, we'll have to heal up after this battle. So, like I said, one of the benefit of, like I said, fighting uh, around the town here. We can just hop into the inn real quick and heal ourselves up. So, all we have is uh, one more uh, card to draw. Um, and it's another bad card. Uh, and then, like I said, then I'll save the game and I'll just uh, do off screen getting the last card. Because, like I said, to get the last card, you basically have to uh, experience all the other uh, bad cards. Uh, the other three bad cards basically in one battle, so you need basically a long battle to, uh, to take place. Which is really hard here because we can't command Oren. Uh, so the time that I actually managed to get the last uh, card, um, I draw a perfection card earlier in the battle, and that uh, defeats Oren, so then he's knocked out. So then, like I said, I can just, uh, you know, d d defend with, uh, I just keep drawing uh, cards with Nara and then have Mara defend. So. But I just uh, drew the evil card there. Uh, it didn't do anything for us, but what that does is it, a mist comes down and it casts Stop Spell uh, on one of your party members. But we didn't uh, suffer that negative effect. Then we do another Strength card. Cast the by kill, double our attack power. Nothing that matters because Mario used a poison needle to take out that uh, that final foe. So we're done around here. We're just gonna return back to Hayville because that's where we'll uh, start the next episode. I'll make a quick save here because this is the closest to Keylon Castle where we have to. Now that we've got that gunpowder, we can scare the council and find out the king's secret chamber and. Hopefully that'll lead us to uh, our arch enemy, uh, uh, Balzac, who we're trying to get revenge against. So I'm gonna save my game here, and then uh, this will pick up in the next episode. But like I said, we still got a little bit of time left in this episode, and I'm gonna devote that to getting that uh, final card. So, we'll just step outside, uh, do a little, like I said, do a little off screen, and then uh, we'll cut it in here so but here we are like I said uh, we got lucky uh, we had uh, Orn and Mara defeated by the perfection card 
And the final one is the Terminator card. If you draw that card, uh, you can only draw that card after you've drawn all the other three negative cards, and it basically summons this Necrodane Skeleton. And they're a really tough enemy toward the end of the game. So as you can see, it just popped up and instantly defeated us. So, but hey, we get to see what happens if we get defeated. A voice is heard out of nowhere, chosen ones, it is not the time to give up. And you just basically are uh, revived, one of your characters is revived at the last uh, place where you save. So, take care, have a good one, see you next episode. Bye!